the 13th day of Secondus, 30014, the bombardment began. From orbit, the Warmaster's ships laid down an unrelenting barrage of missiles and deadly energy beams. The aim was to cripple the defenses around the Emperor's Palace and make possible a massive invasion of Earth. The lunar bases had already fallen, and the defending fleets had been scattered. On Mars, as across the entire vast Imperium, bitter civil war raged. On countless worlds, blood-mad warriors clashed. Some had pledged loyalty to the Emperor. Others had sworn fealty to the War Master Horus. And through him, to the dark powers of chaos. The Emperor's realm was in turmoil, and some of the greatest battles in human history were being fought. On the hive world of Thranks, over a million warriors died in a single day on the killing fields of Padagor. On the blazing deserts of Talan, at the Ka'an Salient, 50,000 tanks clashed in the greatest armored action of all time. During the space drop on Vanaheim, Three hive cities were depopulated by rebel forces as a warning against resistance, and still the defenders fought to the last man. Like a cancer, the heresy infected the entire structure of the Imperium. Everywhere brave men gave up their lives to try and excise that cancer. It was on Earth, at the very heart of humanity's realm, that the fate of the galaxy was to be decided. In those last days, the sky was black with dust clouds and the earth was split by gigantic fissures. Tectonic plates shifted under the stress of the bombardment. Mountain chains shivered and seas evaporated and became salty deserts. Rains of blood and ash dripped from the dark sky. Everywhere, oracles muttered evil portents and men went mad with fear. Hideously twisted ships full of the lost and the damned, hung in orbit over the ravaged world, shielded from the devastation by the cunningly wrought defenses of the Adeptus Mechanicus, a pitiful few stood ready to repel the invaders. The embattled remnants of the Emperor's army were desperately trying to hold out until reinforcements arrived. The Emperor himself oversaw the defense of his fortress palace, personally commanding the Adeptus Custodes, his elite guard, he was accompanied by Sanguinius, white pinion primarch of the Blood Angels, and his chapter of Space Marines. In the palace grounds stood the stalwart Adeptus Arbites. The palace was not the only bastion of resistance. There were others, each an awesome fortified city filled with dauntless soldiers. Beneath their fortress monastery, grim-visaged Rogal Dawn led the stern Imperial Fists in final prayers. Within the armored factory complexes of the Adeptus Mechanicus, tech priests preside their tools and girded on the fearsome weapons of their order. In the rubble of burned-out hab areas, Primarch Jagatai Khan mustered the White Scars, the chapter of Space Marines he had personally instructed in the art of lightning warfare. Three full Titan legions stood ready to defend their Emperor. As the Earth shuddered under the bombardment, Tank divisions roared across the tortured landscape to take up their positions against the coming invasion. Brave men checked their weapons and offered up last prayers. Defense lasers swiveled to face the turbulent, threatening sky. Suddenly, the night was streaked by the plasma contrails of drop pods. Within the Emperor's halls, even the Space Marines shuddered, knowing that they would soon confront their lost and damned brethren. The terrifying prospect of facing... Those corrupt Primarchs who had sold their souls to chaos filled every man's mind with indescribable horror and dread. The pods touched ground, and from them erupted the mightiest champions of chaos, the renegade space marines of the Lost Chapters. These were no longer the fine human warriors of legend, but twisted creatures, bodies warped by the energies of chaos, minds twisted by their devotion to the Dark Powers. If what had happened to the Space Marines was bad, then what had happened to the Primarchs was worse. They had been created higher in the Emperor's esteem and had fallen further. None of their former comrades would have recognized them. They had been transformed into creatures both demonic and exultant. 
Mighty Angron bellowed orders to his blood-drinking followers, the World Eaters. Brandishing his great rune sword, he led them against the defenders of Eternity Wall spaceport. Around his red-armored followers, bolter shots whined. Unflinchingly, they advanced, determined to spill blood for the Blood God. And Mortarion soft spoken command, the Death Guard emerged silently from the festering cocoons of their drop pods and advanced on their terror-stricken foes. The dread runes on Mortarion's scythe glittered eerily in the night as he gestured for them to advance. Magnus the Red glared triumphantly about him with his one watchful eye before ordering the mage warriors of the Thousand Suns to cast their spells of doom. A hail of deadly bolter shells cut down dozens of the Empress' children. Undeterred, the wounded howled with pleasure at the experience and chanted praise of their Primarch Fulgrim. The renegade space marines surged forward to carve a path through their foes. Perhaps some defenders went mad with fear. Perhaps the corruption of chaos ran deeper than anyone suspected. Perhaps some were foolish enough to think that they could negotiate with the ultimate enemy. Whatever the reason, one last vile treachery was to take place. Many units of the Imperial Army that had pledged loyalty to the Emperor turned blasphemer even as the traitor Space Marines made their drop. It was almost as if it were a prearranged signal. In one of the basest acts of betrayal in humanity's history, they turned their weapons on their brother warriors and cut them down like dogs. Thus did the Lionsgate spaceport fall to the rebels. As the heretics chanted and howled their mad prayers, the air shimmered and slavering demons emerged from the warp to spread terror and dismay. Then indeed did it seem to the defenders that they were living in the last days of mankind. Huge, bat-winged bloodthirsters swept triumphantly across weeping skies. Clawed keepers of secrets danced licentiously on piles of corpses. Great unclean ones chuckled as they lumbered through the ruined streets, spreading trails of filth and slime and disease. Enigmatic lords of change perched atop the towers and statues and supervised the coming of chaos to the heart of the world. Mighty ships began the descent from orbit, hoping to overwhelm the defenders by sheer weight of numbers. Unlike the drop pods, these presented fine targets for the weapons of the defenders, and thus did the battle for Earth begin in earnest. Defense lasers blasted many renegade ships from the sky, sending thousands of tons of fused metal death raining down onto the ground below. One giant craft span out of control and crashed into a HAB unit, killing a hundred thousand people. Another was welded to the ground, disgorging its passengers into a lake of bubbling tar and plascrete. The vessel of the warped dogs was vaporized, and that Titan Legion's name passed into history. As quickly as they disembarked, the traitors surged forth from the spaceports to besiege the bastions of the defenders. Their first objective was to silence the defense lasers inflicting such casualties on their comrades. The rebels were met by a wave of Imperial defenders, desperate men who knew that they were giving their lives for their home and their emperor. In the tightly packed streets around the spaceports, the fighting was close and deadly. Bolters chattered and missile launchers delivered cargoes of death from building to nearby building. Traitor tanks rumbled through the avenues, turrets swiveling to bring weapons to bear on the hastily improvised barricades of their former comrades. Soon, the defenders of Eternity Wall Spaceport had been swept aside by the merciless assault, and the hordes of the War Master were in total possession of the space field. More and more intricately wrought dropships descended from orbit. They towered over the landing grounds like nightmare skyscrapers. The dark runes on their sides glowed evilly in the gloom. Hundred-meter-high doors opened in their kilometer-long sides. From their red depths, titans ten times the height of a man emerged. They were warped giants, the armor of their carapace fused and molded into new shapes by the power of chaos. Within them were men melded to their machines. Some of the hideous titans had strange and potent weapons. Others were a bizarre hybrid of the organic and the machine. Metal tentacles lashed, spiked tails whipped back and forth. 
Engines roared like the voices of angry beasts. Banners fluttered. The titans of Storm Lords and the Flaming Skulls legions marched forth. At Lionsgate Spaceport, the traitors welcomed the towering black war engines of the Cornate Host. Minotaurs and trolls and cultists seethed like angry ants around their bases. They struck out across the world, achieving various objectives, but mostly drove directly for the Imperial Palace in a lightning attack. Luckily, this was driven off by the valiant efforts of Sanguinius and the Blood Angels. Wearily, the Primarch marshaled the defenders, rallying the broken, speaking words of comfort to the mortally wounded, fighting with cold, implacable fury when he was called upon to do so. Slowly, though, despite his efforts, the Chaos forces managed to erode the defence. They seemed numberless as the grains of sand on a seashore, and horrors spent their lives carelessly. Outside the walls, Imperial forces frantically raced from their bastions to try and relieve the palace. Titan legions boldly cut their way towards the centre of the rebel army. The White Scars harried its flanks. No attempt to break the rebel line succeeded. Breaking through that blood-mad horde was a near-impossible task. All four of the demonic Primarchs inspired their followers to feats of fiendish bravery. For every Chaos Warrior who died, it seemed two more stood ready to take his place. In orbit, the War Master watched approvingly. If the palace fell and the Emperor died, Loyalist legions across the galaxy would lose heart and the war would be over. Without the psychic shield of the Emperor's power, humanity would swiftly fall prey to chaos. Horrors would stand triumphant amid the rubble of humanity's greatest empire. He would become a new and angry god. If he did not win soon, reinforcements would filter in from the corners of the Imperium, and his attack would falter. For the War Master, this was the desperate ultimate gamble. Everything was staked on this attack. It had to succeed, and at that moment, it looked as if it might. Day by day, the siege wore on. Casualties rose from the thousands to tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands. Bodies had to be bulldozed from the access ways to the Saturnine Gate by war machines. Chaos Titans blazed at the walls, specially constructed missiles ripping great chunks from the masonry. The Titans of the Fire Wasps answered their fire with volcano cannons. The smell of burning flesh filled the air as the corpses of the dead were incinerated in funeral pyres a hundred foot high. Obscene ash parched the throats of the defenders. The World Eaters built a pyramid of scorched skulls, sixty foot high, in Temple Square. By night, the chants of degenerate cultists echoed through the streets, and demons flitted among the ruins of Earth. Slowly, foot by torturous foot, the defenders were forced back. The great walls of the palace were riddled with hundreds of kilometers of bulkheads and corridor. Within this maze, bitter hand-to-hand -hand fighting ensued until entire sections of passage were filled with bloated corpses. Feeling progress was too slow, Horus ordered the titans of the Death's Head Legion to demolish entire sections of the wall. Despite taking tremendous casualties, the great warlord titans broke through and the forces of the War Master flooded into the palace grounds. While all this was taking place, Jagatai Khan had implemented a change of plan. Rather than throwing away his forces against the near-invincible bulk of the main Chaos Army, he launched a lightning raid against Lion's Gate Spaceport. This night attack was spearheaded by the shaven-headed warriors of the White Scars, who led the remnants of the 1st Tank Division and elements of the surviving Guard armies against the surprised heretics. Khan threw a defensive perimeter around the spaceport and held it against all counterattacks. The flow of men and materials towards the palace was halved at a stroke. This success gave heart to the defenders. They swiftly attempted to seize Eternity Wall spaceport, but here the forces of the War Master were better prepared. The attackers were ambushed and driven back by traitors. Horus knew it was imperative to keep his beachhead secure. The final push when the inner palace had begun. The battle raged across the grounds of the inner gardens. What had once been a vast parkland was swiftly turned into a killing ground. Men used statues for cover and monuments for bunkers. 
Blood swirled in the waters of the ornamental lakes. Groves of ancient redwoods burned. The smell of the burning mingled with the acrid odors of weapons and engines and death. Red-eyed, snatching sleep when they could, both sides fought a total war. Trenches were hurriedly excavated in the meadows. Snipers killed men as they tried to sip brackish water from the ruined foundations. Both sides fought with unimaginable naked ferocity. Both sides sensed the end was near. Eventually, Sanguinius was forced to retreat to within the palace itself, personally holding the ultimate gate against the oncoming horde while the last of his wounded men was carried through. Just as the giant ceramide gate was about to close, a bloodthirster of corn leapt upon him. The demon's huge talons closed around his throat. Sanguinius tucked to the air. Angel and demon wrestled over the warring armies. Both sides halted for a moment to watch the titanic struggle. It was a conflict such as been rarely seen. Two beings of awesome power wrestled. Sanguinius was weary, near the end of his strength, and the demon gouged great wounds in his flesh. The heretical throng roared its approval as the Primarch was cast to the ground, the impact splintering the granite. For a moment, Primarch lay still, and a groan rose from the blood angels. The demon stood over him and howled in exultation. Then, slowly and painfully, the blood angel rose and seized the creature, raised it high and broke its back across his knee. Then, with a halo of power playing around his head, he tossed its broken carcass back amid its followers. They beat their chests and rent their hair and wailed in dismay as the ultimate gate shut. The Great Sky Fortress bore Rogel Dawn and the remnants of the Imperial Fist to the inner palace. The loyal old general was determined to stand and die with his emperor in the final hour. The Sky Fortress raced away from the palace in a desperate attempt to reach Jagatai Khan and return him to the palace. It was destroyed by a blaze of fire from the Death's Head Titan legions. Even in death, its commander wrought havoc on the enemy, bringing the crippled vehicle down into the center of the Chaos Horde. It seemed as if a new sun was born on Earth as the plasma reactor exploded, blasting out a crater three kilometers across. Those within the palace knew they were cut off. Now, they were truly alone. Only a miracle could save them. Now, the final siege began. Through great breaches in the outer walls, more and more armaments and reinforcements were brought to bear. The War Master himself prepared to teleport down to the surface and supervise the destruction of his former lord. Then a demon from the war whispered to him the words that he had dreaded. The Loyalist fleet, under Lehman Russ and Lionel Johnson, bearing a fresh army of space wolves and dark angels, was only hours away. It would take days to break humanity's last citadel, even with Horus leading his troops. It seemed that time had run out for the War Master, that his gamble had failed. Horus was first among the fallen, with the power of a god and the cunning of a demon. He resolved to try one final desperate gambit. He could still kill the Emperor. He ordered all Comnet communications blocked so that the defenders would get no word from their rescuers, and then he used his psychic powers to the full to prevent the Emperor becoming aware of this. Finally, he dropped the shields of his command ship. It was an invitation and a personal challenge that he knew the Emperor could not resist. He was being offered a chance, finally, to smite the foe who had harried him for so long. The Emperor rose to the challenge, and he and his surviving Primarchs teleported aboard the War Master's battle barge. Horus used his powers to separate the Emperor from his loyal followers. The Loyalists were transported to different spots within his hideously altered ship. Sanguinius he had brought directly to his throne room. In his evil cunning, the War Master offered the Blood Angel a chance to switch sides, reasoning that the winged Primarch's followers would be useful when the Space Wolves and the Dark Angels arrived. Sanguinius refused. Horus grew wrathful and attacked him. 
At the peak of his powers, the Blood Angel would have been no match for the War Master. And now, sorely wounded and weary, he had no chance at all. Horus strangled him with his bare hands before the throne the powers of chaos had gifted him with. The Emperor found Horus shortly after this, and what happened next is the subject of legend. The two mightiest beings in the history of mankind clashed. They met blade to blade, power to power, mind to mind, and tested sinew and psychic power to the ultimate. Behind Horus was the massed power of the Chaos Gods. The Emperor stood alone, and still he triumphed, although he was terribly wounded in the process. The psychic shockwave of the War Master's passing rippled outward through the warp. On Earth, demons screamed and vanished, and the rebel Primarch stood dumbfounded. It was their leader, not their enemies, who was dead, and they knew it. With the one who had raised the banner of rebellion dead, there was nothing to hold the rebels together. They were demoralized and dismayed. When word of the oncoming Imperial fleet reached them, they knew that they must flee. Within the perimeter of Lionsgate Spaceport, Jagatai Khan and the handful of unwounded White Scars watched in amazement as the Horde halted in confusion, then retreated. Angron, Fulgrim, Magnus the Red and Mortarian led their men to their ships and departed, leaving the deluded, treacherous followers of Chaos to their fate. As he stepped aboard his ship, Angron turned and shook his fist at the glittering dome of the Imperial Palace that had proved just out of his taloned reach. Then he shrugged. He and his fellow rebels had all eternity to seek revenge. The battle for Earth was effectively over. The Horus heresy was ended. Rogel Dawn found the Emperor's broken body in the ruins of the War Master's throne room. Through mangled lips, the Emperor whispered instructions for the creation of his golden throne. Dawn smiled. For while the Emperor still lived, there was still hope. The old general returned to Earth. There was much to be done. Thanks everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. This is the original lore of the Horus Heresy as part of the uh, the epic game that they did. It's written by Jarvis Johnson and uh, the mighty Bill King, uh, who many will know from reading the novels and stuff. So yeah, it's old, and this is everything that the Horus Heresy was based on. To be honest, this is the most detailed thing. Before then, there was just a couple of little mentions in the lore as a, a thing that happened. But yeah, uh, you can see what they've done with it since then, how they've expanded it. I hope you did enjoy this. I, I remember going to Games Workshop when I was very young, uh, to the HQ in Nottingham. And it was probably like 11 or so or 12. And you're talking, I think it was probably before, I think it was late 90s. I'm not sure. I can't remember exactly when. Probably late 90s. 97, 98, maybe. Maybe earlier. I'm not sure. But I went there with uh, a friend. And um, it was, it got GWHQ didn't have castle walls on there, there, you know. It was very much just like a, a conference hall with tables and stuff, you know, old school. But they did have a big room with all of the painted models in and stuff and all the dioramas from back in the day. So they had the uh, Siege of the Empress Palace, but things like, you know, Big Tooth River and all that. But the Siege of the Empress Palace and, and, and suits of armor, which I don't know why they got rid of them because they were awesome. You know, it was the ones they used in that Inquisitor video for all the little shorts. I think when they were trying to pitch the universe to different companies and stuff. If any of you have seen that, worth checking out it's just for the just for the fun. But uh, they had full suits of Terminator armor and stuff like that. It was cool, man. It was cool. They'd give out print-offs of this, of this short story when you went to the um, Siege of the Empress Palace exhibit. And it was all there laid out, you know, titans and loads of bodies and everything. It was just so awesome. But yeah, that's, that's the Horus Heresy as I've known it, you know. And it's nice, there's little details in there. For instance, the one that's always struck me as weird is that Phalanx, by the sounds of it in this, Phalanx destroys itself. Um, so I'd like to see how they're going to write that in there. But it's got the amazing moments in there then. And it filled me, I don't know, it was, it's always struck me as amazing. The, uh, the White Scars and the first Terran tank division charging at the Lionsgate spaceport to retake it and stuff. So you've got all this goodness to come. If you're not aware what actually happens in the heresy, I guess it's a little bit of a spoiler, but not really because it's been, you know, it's been part of the law for 
20 years. So if you don't, if you didn't know that, that's your fault, isn't it? All right. I'm going to have another one of these coming up soon where I'll go over the, um, a short video where we go over the confrontation between Horus and the Emperor, at least in the old law. So it's what's this, the new stuff is based on. So if you're not aware what happens there, this will be a bit spoilery, but I'll just put it out there and, you know, you'll enjoy it. And at least you'll get a glimpse of what to expect and who to expect. But yeah, I've ranted and I wasn't going to. Thank you all for supporting the channel. You can see your names here. More stuff is coming up soon. I hope you enjoyed this. This is a proper nostalgia awesomeness for me. And uh, I'm glad I found this because I haven't had it for years. But anyway, I'll see you later. Bye bye. Cheers.